Good evening and welcome to this edition of the Strawberry Patch. All of our strawberry patches are brought to you by Tennerton Auto and we want to thank them for supporting our Strawberry Patch. You can take your car to Tennerton Auto. They will do your work. They will also uh, give you an inspection for your vehicle and they also do towing. So check out Tennerton Auto located in Tennerton at the light you turn on the the road on the Thomasville Road and you'll find them right along there. They'd be happy to serve your vehicles. So thank you, Tennerton. This evening I have a special guest with me. Folks probably recognize <laughs> you. This is Rob Smith. He was president the last couple of years for the Strawberry Festival. Do you feel relieved at all? <laughs> I'm like, yes, yes. You do? <laughs> yes, ma'am. It's it's been uh -huh. To set in the back, it's been very nice. But you, you have had you have had all kinds of, of interesting challenges this year. Rob is working with our vendors. He works with the carnival, and that's the question we get every day: Are you having a carnival? I can assure you, we are having a carnival. Yes. <laughs> and can you explain a little bit of what's going on and why things are just a little bit confusing? Uh, but we are going to have it, and it's going to be downtown. Just yes. share a little information. You have more than we do. Right. So. Uh, I have posted a map that the city of Buchanan has worked with us. Mm -hmm. uh, I've met with Gamble Amusement on three or four different occasions. I've met with Kenny Davis and the mayor, uh, Jerry Arnold, the whole bunch of them. Mm -hmm. And we have worked out, uh, I said in a meeting last night, we are playing the cards that were dealt with us. Or it's going to us. work. It's going to work. It's going to be an inconvenience this year. Uh, just to get, habits are hard to break. Right. So it's going to be a little bit, you know, please bear with us because I can assure you it's not going to work like clockwork like it has in the past. Uh, I can't, you know, the vendors that we had over here, Martino's, uh, have are going to do groundbreaking on a new building so they will not allow us to use their mm -hmm. facility this that's year that's where vendor alley used yes, to be yes okay. and so you know i want to thank martinos because for 14 years we had a permanent home for the vendors and they were very nice and to they us. were very nice to us so you know we need to be thankful and just deal with what what we need to deal with. Well, things change all the time, Absolutely. and you have to go with the flow, so to speak. <laughs> but I think what you've worked out is going to be nice. It wants people, especially signs. Are you going to have signs out to We are going people? to have signs, and uh, <clears throat> we have moved to vendors now down to the old food land parking lot, which the city calls it parking lot three. Mm -hmm. And I can, uh, there's going to be a few that I'm going to have to work with but I was able to accommodate all the vendors that have reserved a right to come back this year. And so, a lot of them are, are regulars yes. who come every year. Yes, so uh, there's going to be a couple ones that have went from uh, push along cart mm -hmm. that wanted to do a trailer this year that I'm not going to be able to have room for. Okay. Uh, but we're just going to have to do it and get by with it. Now, you do have a few others along Main Street, isn't that uh, correct? The ones yes. that have been there before? Uh, I did talk to Mike Fiola at First Community mm -hmm. Bank, and they have allowed us to use the corner lot there uh, where the Tennyson, or the Keesley Mill Lions Club Oh, okay. Out. They do so, beef or something, barbecue maybe, uh, or yeah, sandwiches of some kind. But I hope to be able to put in, I have a local boy that has moved to New Jersey and his family still lives at Keesley Mill and he wants to come back home for the Strawberry mm -hmm. Festival and he has a t-shirt company in New Jersey so okay. he wants to come and make uh, customized t-shirts so uh, the problem that I have with that lot I have very minimal electric Correct. so people don't realize all the different little quirks and things that you have like electric <laughs> is right. a big deal uh, <laughs> So, you know, at that particular location, instead of having a temporary pole set, I'm considering just using a generator. So that limits me on what I can mm -hmm. put in that area. Uh, but the t-shirt will work. And then I had a 
a lady from Charleston that has been here for years and years and I really had no place to put her so I put her there as well. Just try to accommodate the people mm -hmm. that have been faithful now, to us. I, I remember one that we always see close to the courthouse. I think it's sort of in that little alley between uh, the bank. It, they do popcorn. Kettle corn. Yes. So that'll still be there. That'll still so be there, there. there's still going to be some things where you're normally going to find them. Absolutely. So it just the ones that we were going to put on Vendor Alley are mainly the ones that are going yes. to down on Spring Street. And to be fair, uh, we have discuss just moving all the vendors instead of trying to put one here one there mm -hmm. uh, we want everybody to leave with a smile on their face right. so if we keep everybody together then everybody comes in with the same opportunity mm -hmm. and that we, works we hope that it works well and and one of the things that you've shared in our meetings that you might want to share with the folks there in the past we've tried having some vendors down there and it's been very dark Yes. and we've had no entertainment and we've had the streets blocked off so now you've made some provisions for those little problems that we had in the past exactly uh, what we have done the main stage that used to set up on the corner down here on Maine and Florida Street mm -hmm. we have moved the main stage down uh, on the street uh, in between where the vendors are and the Salvation Army okay so that should be a draw well, I would think so. Vendors. Do people need, if they're coming down to that main station, do they need to bring their lawn chairs? Uh, you know, it's always a good idea. Mm -hmm. You know, have one of the lawn chairs that goes over your back and or sit down and enjoy. Yeah, enjoy. Uh, another thing that we have done is uh, Spring Street. Uh, Carol just told me a little bit ago that it is in the works to get lights, but uh, Spring Street is a dark street. Mm -hmm. And that may have intimidated some people. So uh, what the Strawberry Festival Association has thought about doing was putting some rope lights up and down the street to lighten it up and make to go to the vendors more like a courtyard mm -hmm. uh, oh, setting instead of just a dark alley to go mm -hmm. someplace. Uh, and I hope that it works. Uh, we're just going to have to bear with it and do it this year and hope for the best. Now when are they coming in? The vendors will start setting up on Tuesday at 6.30. Okay, that's festival week. That on would be week. on the 15th, right? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Okay. And they are not allowed, uh, and this is one thing that I want to stress, all of our vendors have to have a food permit, they have to have liability insurance, mm -hmm. you know, so they are an operating business Correct. and we do check that and we have records of everything uh, so they set up but they cannot set up to sell until everybody has been inspected that's uh, good. by the health yeah, department that's good uh, that's just to, to try to make safety. it more fair safety and but every and it's been my experience I've worked with the vendors for seven years now and The health department really does a good job with their inspection. Uh, well, you have to be careful. I mean, you're, you're talking about food. Absolutely. And you want everything to be safe for everybody that's eating so we don't mm -hmm. get people that are sick and have to go to the hospital or whatever. Right. But uh, I have been in probably 99% of every vendor that we've had that serves food mm -hmm. and feel very comfortable. That's why they come back. You know, they are clean, they're, mm -hmm. they're operating, they're polite. So, you know, I wouldn't put somebody out here that I wouldn't want to eat out of their, their well, trailer. That's, so. that's a good way to think about it. So we know that the vendors are going to be here, and the nose will help us go that direction, I'm uh, sure, well, we certainly with all hope. the different things. We certainly I even hope. heard you might have a big chicken barbecue down there. Is that still in the works, maybe? Uh, not to my knowledge. Oh, okay. I misunderstood that oh. then. Uh, Jaws, uh, Gary Cannell, mm -hmm. he will be setting up down there and he will be having his uh, barbecue pit going and I'll assure you that you can smell it all over town. Well, good, good. So, well, we and, and we have funnel cakes and I think the, the root beer man is yes, coming Yes, the root back. beer man. Uh, We've got some favorites that everybody yes. likes. Mm -hmm. And now, you're going to have the vendors there. What are you going to do? Usually there are 
places for them to sit down and eat. So we're still going to have that. We are still going to have picnic tables. The parking lot is big enough to accommodate okay. some picnic okay. tables down the center. Uh, my thought is to put some on Spring Street as well. Okay. Uh, just just to try to make it more of a courtyard. Appearance. So now, if there's somebody watching our program this evening and they say, "Well, how do I get to?" Um, southern states how do I get where I need to go there are other ways that you can get Absolutely. here can you explain that now the street uh, Spring Street will not be shut down for traffic until Friday evening okay uh, we will have two vendors on the street if everything goes right that's Friday but this is from Tuesday on. Oh, okay, okay. But they will be sitting in the parking areas in front of St. Joe's Hospital. So, you know, when they're not opened up for business, when the streets are still opened, mm -hmm. uh, we, we want to accommodate Southern states. Uh, they are a business. Right. They're here 365 days right. a year instead of just five. And I just heard something, and I'm going to put this in. This is a good place because Southern States is going to do a barnyard bingo mm -hmm. for a Relay for Life. So we'll be telling you more about that, but it'll be down on the Stockert um, grassy area next to Stockert Youth Center. So watch for more information on the Southern States. And I, I don't have all the words. I will write it down and make sure <laughs> I have it right the next time. But it's barnyard bingo and that's going to be the same day as we have all the horses in town mm -hmm. so instead of Bessie bingo it's going to be a horse and it's going to be interesting so you'll <laughs> want to find out more information about that so I just wanted to plug Southern States Barnyard Bingo while we're, we're talking Great. about them uh, and of course uh, I've met with uh, Shane Turner which is the son of Ted Turner mm -hmm. and Nancy uh, they are the owners of Gamble Amusement and they have worked with us very well. So we have sat down, we've got locations for every ride that we've had in the past. So we're not going to miss any. We're not going to miss Wonderful. any. They're going to be a little bit more spread out. That won't hurt anything. It won't be maybe no, as but, crowded. It gets pretty crowded down absolutely. there some nights. But I think we're in, in good shape. I want to thank uh, James Huber from Wendy, Wendy's. He's allowed us to use the lot. Mm -hmm. And that has really been an asset this year with all the Correct. Uh, construction that's going on at Jawbone Park. Uh, so thanks again to James Huber and Wendy's. Okay. And I know the city has tried very hard to get everything done. Oh. And it's just one of those times when you can work when the weather's permitting. Mm -hmm. And there are certain things that they're going to do down there that you, you can't get on them until they've sat for a little bit. Right. Isn't that correct? Absolutely. You know, uh, the carnival rods are quite heavy. Mm -hmm. So you don't want to put them on fresh asphalt. Uh, so it needed to cure a little bit and that's that's been one thing but it's going to work we're going to have a good time so gee whiz let's just have a let's make Buchanan a party place now i i do think we're going to have some children's events that are sort of spread away from the other rides a little bit is that correct uh, yes all the children's area is going to be right here where the old dnl tire lot used to be the new town square yes uh, they are going to utilize that for the children's area. And I think it will look quite attractive with uh, merry-go-round and all that mm -hmm, right here mm -hmm. on the street. That's going to be exciting. Mm -hmm. It's going to bring a little bit more excitement right close to Main Street mm -hmm. because we have parades going down Main Street. Uh, we're going to have one. Well, on the 12th, we'll be having the horse and carriage parade. Then we have the junior royalty on Thursday, the, what, the 17th? Six, yeah, 17th, then Fireman's Parade on uh, the next night, and then our Grand Feature Parade and an Antique Car Parade on uh, the 19th. So we've got all kinds of parades down Strawberry, what we call Strawberry Lane, and that location starts at Marion Street, comes down past Poling St. Clair Funeral Home, uh, down the hill, makes a turn and comes up to the courthouse, goes down Strawberry Lane, which is Main Street, and clear down almost to the library. Mm -hmm. So now's the time to start thinking about a place to put your chair. And you know, we talked about this last week. Not every place that you go for a fair or festival 
has free places to sit and watch their events. But we do. Mm -hmm. Just bring your lawn chair. If you're coming to town, bring your lawn chair, sit at the courthouse and listen to the entertainment. Come to Town Square for our weekend prior to the festival. Uh, go down where you can have your entertainment and your food down on Spring Street. Bring your lawn chairs. Just a little lightweight lawn chair does mm -hmm. a lot of comfort for you through that week. It absolutely does. And uh, if you see a board member in a red shirt, we'll be probably looking for your chair because by the end of the week's end, we are all just very <laughs> tired. I was telling somebody the other day, it's, it, we, we really appreciate Channel 3 because some of these things we never get to see till after the festival is over. Mm -hmm. And they usually will play things several times. So the Junior Royalty Parade and the Fireman's Parade, sometimes we don't even get to see them. Mm -hmm. So what else are you working with that we need to know about? I know one thing I want to ask you, and that's about uh, a lot of folks are nonprofit organizations, and they want to do something to raise funds for their church or, or their scout troop or whatever. So how can they participate? We encourage this. You know, uh, our charter stated that it was done to produce the strawberries. That's mm -hmm. what we have the Strawberry Festival for, and to promote business in Buchanan and right. Upshur County. So that's what we strive to do, and we encourage uh, businesses, uh, church groups. You know, I've said many a times that we're bringing a hundred to one hundred and fifty thousand people in town. Mm -hmm. It's your job to get the money out. Of their pocket into yours. That's a good way to look at it. <laughs> and, you know, that's that's a business way of mm -hmm. looking at it. So uh, we encourage it. If you do want to do a church group, uh, any nonprofit. Uh, last year I had a, a church group that wanted to send some kids to a youth camp. And that was a nonprofit. They paid mm -hmm. $50. And basically the $50 it covers our insurance, and, you know, we don't really make a lot off of the nonprofits, but it's just a way for us to say that you are a sanctioned event mm -hmm. and you're covered under well, our... Well, and that covers us, too, usually with the, if they're serving foods and things right. like that. Does that cover uh, the permit yes. there? Yes. Uh, we do have the permit, which uh, Josh from the health department will come and mm -hmm. do an inspection. So, you know, it, it keeps everybody healthy, keeps everybody happy, and that's what it's designed for. It's not to design because we're money hungry and want the $50, because really we do not realize a lot from the $50. True, true. Uh, I do want to stress that, you know, the carnival and the vendors are very important to the West Virginia mm -hmm. Strawberry Festival. Uh, there's very few events that we charge for. That's true. And, you know, this is a dollar and cent age. Mm -hmm. Everything costs something. So if we don't charge the public for it, we have got to make our money from someplace. Mm -hmm. And that would be from the vendors. That would be from... We get a percentage of the carnival. We get a percentage of the carnival. So, you know, if you look at it in dollars and cents, those two items are probably about a third of our budget, our True. yearly budget. And so then we, we want to make sure we thank all of the local businesses and organizations that do support the mm -hmm. festival. You'll see a lot of names attached to various events, and those are businesses who have given us some dollars so that we can bring that event to you. Uh, without all the, the businesses and, and corporations, it would be very difficult to put on such a large event as the Strawberry Festival. Well, it wouldn't happen. No, no, I don't think so either. I mean, you can have you can have all kinds of little get-togethers, but you know, just like our, our entertainment on Friday and Saturday night with the Party Gras, we have to pay for those groups Absolutely. that come in here. Uh, we have to, some facilities, we, we just are so grateful to West Virginia Wesleyan College because without them, there would be some events, again, we would not have right. because of their facilities. And they've been so generous with us to allow us to use the Ross Stadium and to use the new Arts Center 
to use Rock Rockefeller Gym. We have mm -hmm. the arts and crafts there. We have the quilt show and the photo and art exhibit. Well, the art exhibit photos at Bill Kelly's. That's right. another business who is very much opening their doors to allow us to do mm -hmm. something there. So uh, we just really never have enough thanks to give to all these Absolutely. folks. Absolutely. And, you know, we are the Strawberry Board, but this is a whole community event. Right. It is and not our festival. It's it not is ours. your festival. Absolutely. And we, we just love volunteers, too. <laughs> when you think of, of the Strawberry Festival Board, mm -hmm. we are volunteers. We don't get paid, but there's only 21 on the board with five associate members, and then we need your help. Because, you know, with parades, I, I know last night we were talking about. Um, I think it was the police department or the safety, something, some yes. department you might be able to it was the, talk about that. The police for the horse show. Okay. Or for the horse and, and, and they carriage. want board members on the corners right. and throughout the, the area. And if you stop and think, mathematically, there's more than 21 intersections. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so I don't know how we're going to get all of us on. But we could use your help. So Absolutely. if you would like to participate, maybe stand on a corner and just make sure that everything's going all right. And, and one thing I will mention here since we just talked about the horses, when we have this horse and carriage parade, uh, I know at the end of our grand feature parade, lots of times we'll have horses. Mm -hmm. Well, some people say, oh, the horses are coming, it's time to leave. They'll walk over in front of them or behind them, not realizing that they could spook that horse. The rider could get hurt, you could get hurt, the horse could be injured. So think a little bit about that whenever the horse and carriage parade is coming. Don't get out and walk across the street back and forth in front of all these horses and carriages. Don't do it at the end of the parade when you have horses in the parade. Mm -hmm. Be a little bit courteous because that parade is still going on. And those people want to be seen just like the other units that are in the parade. So I just I say that Susie talked a little bit mm -hmm. about that. And I think it's a very important thing to remember that, you know, these are our guests. And we want them to feel comfortable while they're here. We don't want anybody to get hurt. Right. That's the same thing with the rule we have with throwing candy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we, get, we get really scared sometimes because people are in the parades and they decide we want all the kids to have candy. So they throw the candy from their car or, or their horse and buggy or whatever and kids run out and they could get hurt. Absolutely. If you were on our end and looking at it where you know when you're watching the parade you're so involved in the parade uh, and there's parents that are watching the parade and their kids are just milling around and I've seen them go out to grab a piece of candy in between this far, this far from a car a car tire too. absolutely and it's so dangerous the one that took <clears throat> my breath was when a kid went in between a float and the truck Mm. and the driver couldn't see it and that was the truck pulling the yes. float oh my goodness so you know that's that's why we have the rule of no throwing candy is just to stop we don't want any accidents and it doesn't mm -hmm. hurt for the parents to be uh, a little more aware of mm -hmm. you know if somebody does throw candy Make sure your child is controlled enough that they don't run right out in the middle of the street. A lot of folks will try to throw it right at the curb, or there are people who walk along mm -hmm. and do, you know, pass out things. And I don't think that's a problem. It's when you have someone in the middle of the street throwing and, right. and the candy doesn't get very far from where they're throwing mm -hmm. it. So it could be a real dangerous situation. That's, that's what I've seen. What else do you want to share with the folks that are watching that... Probably uh, only you guys. <laughs> I mean, you've worked on the work crew. You've you've just done about everything, including being president. But being president doesn't mean you get all of the special uh, treatment. <laughs> you get well, out work as hard as everybody else. You know, last year, I've got to thank the board. Uh, last year, I would get a call. I need to come work at the vendors. I had a problem. I need to take care of it. I'd walk down the street. No, I'd rob my golf cart down the street <laughs> because I was privileged. And I get down, and they say, "Oh no, so and so is taking care of that." And it really, you know, there is a lot of work in being president. Uh, you know, I did not do it single handedly. There, you know, there was a everybody. That's a team effort. It was a team effort. But it did free me up, and 
uh, the one of the highlights of the whole week was I had talked to C.J. Rollins at C.J. Mikey's, mm -hmm. and I said I have some special people, uh, our queen, and there's just a few special people that I would like to go up on top of C.J. Mikey's at dusk and photograph the festivities. Oh, how neat. And he allowed me to do that, and <clears throat> we went up, I'd taken the queen, uh, the hostess princesses, you know, the royalty, mm -hmm. uh, we went up, and I figured they would get bored with it in just a couple minutes, and after a good little bit, I had to look at the girls and said, I'm sure they're going to close up here before long, we probably <laughs> ought to go, but they really enjoyed it, so... You know, there's a thanks to CJ. That really meant a lot to a lot of people and gave us some wonderful photographs to use in brochures, program books, or, or what have you. So, you know, it worked out very good for well, us. Well, our businesses are good to us. And the, the folks along the parade routes, I just can't ever thank them enough because they come out and if somebody is, is having a, a problem, maybe they're too warm because of the sun, come in on my porch and rest a little mm -hmm. bit. Or they'll bring bottles of water. I've seen them do water stations for our band students and other groups that are marching through when it's really warm. So uh, I appreciate that. The board appreciates that. We also appreciate the folks that do a, a nice job getting their yards ready. Now's the time to start putting those strawberries out. And when folks come to town, let me tell you, there's strawberries of every kind, strawberries to eat, strawberries to wear, strawberries in the gift shop, different items, shirts and things that they can take home. And uh, our restaurants this year are going to do some special things. We have strawberry mm -hmm. pancakes, and we have strawberry shortcake. We have strawberry pies probably smoothies, and some of our vendors bring special strawberry Absolutely. treats. Absolutely. So it's just going to be a fun time, and with the festival expanding this year, it's an exciting family tradition with something new happening with our weekend of the 11th, 12th, and 13th. The Queen's Ball will be on the 11th at the Moose, mm -hmm. and I think we have tickets available now. Absolutely. I know my daughter has some at Hometown Market, and where else can they find them? Oh. I know there's two two other places. Mm -hmm. I think the Hallmark said they would yes. sell them too. So there's a couple places. Maybe the bookstore is one. I'm not I sure. But check around because there are some places that uh, you can purchase the tickets. It's $25 a couple or $15 for a single. You need to sort of dress up a little bit because... Um, no jeans are allowed. You need to have a, a shirt, shirt with a yes. collar on it. And... Um, Stone Street's going to be playing music. There'll be hors d'oeuvres and some desserts and things mm -hmm. there. So it's a, it's going to be a fun evening, and the royalty will be there to visit with the folks. And then on the 12th is our, I say Wild West is coming to Buckhanna because <laughs> we've got all kinds of horses coming and horse and carriage rides, horse and stagecoach rides. We're going to have roping and demonstrations on different things that you can do to care for your horses. We'll have We'll have Barnyard Bingo, <laughs> and we're going to have the open case performances on Main Street. We have at least two, maybe three CEO clubs that are going to be setting up that day with strawberry crafts and foods. So that's going to be fun. And then the Mother's Day celebration on the 13th. That'll be in the town square right close to us here with Jaws Barbecue doing uh, a feast for the mothers. So make plans now to bring Mom out for uh, Mother's Day, and that day is praise and worship. Mm -hmm. Then we go right in with, we have all kinds of windows that are going to be uh, having collectibles in them. So you can stroll downtown and look at all the windows. Uh, be ready for the opening ceremonies at the courthouse on Wednesday the 16th at 12 noon. I think you do that. The opening, you do ceremonies? opening ceremonies? Yes. Yes, you get to do that. That's the past president's job, right? I enjoy being the past president <laughs> as well. <laughs> so we'll get to see Rob. Maybe he'll be you'll be decked out a little bit. I, oh yes, okay. yes. 
<laughs> and that night, the coronation at Wesley Chapel at 7 o'clock. So, folks, now's the time to start planning all these wonderful things that we're going to have available for you. Come and attend the festival. Have a good time. Much of the, the entertainment that we're going to have is free to the public. Yes. We've tried to keep the cost down as much as we can. We know that it's, it's hard right now economy-wise, but we're going to have a festival, and you're invited to come. Again, May the 11th through the 20th. So um, we just want everybody to know about what's going on now. If you are a nonprofit, you still have room for vendors. I, yes. I would prefer them to find a location mm -hmm. and have written permission from the property owner. That's a good thing. And uh, yes, we, we welcome it. Okay. You've got all this information. Rob, thank you for coming thank this you. evening. And I want to again thank Tenor Tonato for being our uh, Strawberry Patch sponsor. You can find all the needs for your uh, car repair at Tenor Tonato. They will inspect your car, and if you happen to break down someplace, call them and they'll tow you in. So thank you, Tenorton, for helping us, and thank you, everybody who um, might be volunteering in some capacity with the West Virginia Strawberry Festival. Uh, we're going to have a good time, so let's get ready. We're going to have an exciting family tradition. Thank you for joining us this evening with the Strawberry Patch. We'll see you next week.